Hi everyone, it's Miss Lenorovitz, and I just wanted to talk you through a little bit of the strategy for analyzing your data for the Ideal Gas Lab report. Um, so when you're working on your lab, you are going to be collecting data for two different samples of gas. Um, one of those samples will be a sample of air. The other one is going to be your choice of either hydrogen gas, nitrogen gas, or helium gas. And you're going to expose that volume of gas that's contained in a syringe to five different water baths, each at a different temperature. So you're going to be recording temperature in Celsius of the water bath, which should be analogous to temperature of your gas sample, and then the volume of the air sample. What you're going to do with that data is you are actually going to be using your data to extrapolate and calculate absolute zero. So how do you do that? Um, I'm going to show you in this video first how to do that if you are graphing in Google Sheets, and then I will show you how to do it if you are graphing in Excel. Both options work. If you are graphing by hand, just make sure you are using graph paper for this, um, and we'll talk about that in the last part of this video. This first part is going to be how to take this data and graph it in Excel. Um, what you're going to want to do is show the relationship between temperature, your independent variable that you were purposefully changing, and volume, which is the dependent variable. So I've just copied my data table portion for hydrogen gas over into the Excel spreadsheet. But really, the only information we're going to be using for graphing is temperature in Celsius versus volume in milliliters. Um, it, Google Sheets and Excel will both interpret whatever is in your left-hand column as being your independent variable, so it's helpful to have that on the left-hand side. I'm then going to highlight the data that I want to graph, including my column heading, because that will actually help me out, and then I'm going to go to Insert Chart. Now here, Google Sheets and Excel also will try to do some thinking for you you want to make sure you direct it towards the type of graph that you want. So under setup, instead of column chart, we don't want that. This isn't categorical data. This is continuous data. I'm going to scroll down and in Google Sheets, I would select scatter. So we're going to get a graph that looks a little bit more like this with data points. Now we have a few more steps to do. Okay, here we have a raw unlabeled graph of our data. Um, remember that what we're hoping to show is temperature on our x-axis and volume on our y-axis, but without any labels, our reader isn't going to know that. So one of our next steps is that we're going to go in and we're going to put in axes labels. Um, if your editing window closes, just click on your chart, click on the snowman, and click on edit chart. And then you should see a menu over on the right-hand side of the screen you're going to then toggle to customize. And there are lots of different things you can do from this menu. But in terms of putting in labels, you're going to click on chart and axes titles. I'm going to start with the chart title. Um, the chart title should tell you the relationship between the variable on the y axis and the x axis. So we know we have the volume of the hydrogen sample on our y axis. And on our x axis, we're showing temperature. Remember that in your title and in your labels, you want to include your units of measurement as well. I'm going to do the same thing for our horizontal axis title. So that's going to be our x-axis label and the same thing for the vertical axis title. Great. So now we have a well-labeled graph. The thing that we're trying to figure out from this graph is the trend of our data. You can see that as temperature decreases, so does volume. That would be an expected result. Um, what we're really interested in is at what temperature is the volume zero? Um, we're going to assume that that temperature is pretty close to absolute zero. So that means we need to change the scale of our x-axis so that we can see where this data would intersect with our x-axis. So in order to do that, you're going to go into the chart editor. Again, if it's not showing up for you, you go to the snowman and you click on edit chart. From there, we're going to go to our horizontal axis. And I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and what I'm looking for are minimum and maximum values. Google Sheets will make assumptions based on your data set, but it doesn't necessarily know what you want to do with your data in the end. Since we're hoping that this is going to cross at about absolute zero, which is minus 273 degrees Celsius, I'm going to put my minimum value at negative 300, just in case it doesn't cross perfectly at that location. I'm also going to change my maximum value. Um, to 100. 
We don't have any data points that are higher than that. Um, so that allows that scale to be a little bit more representative of our data set. So now we can see already a little bit different look in our graph. It's the same data, but now you can start to project about where that data is going to cross the x-axis. That's what we're looking for is that point where it crosses the x-axis. Just eyeballing it, it looks like we're going to cross somewhere between negative 200 and negative 300 degrees Celsius, which is great. That means our data is really high quality. The next thing I'm going to do is just for personal preference, I'm going to add in a little bit more detail on our X and our Y axis so that we can see how that scale breaks down a little bit more. So I'm going to do that in the editing menu under grid lines and ticks. I'm going to put in both the minor grid lines, the major ticks, and the minor ticks. And you'll notice that happened just for the Y axis here, but you can now see a little bit more detail on the Y axis. I'm going to do the same thing for our horizontal axis, our vertical, sorry, our horizontal axis, our x-axis. So I'm going to put in those same major and minor ticks just so that I can see the breakdown of a little bit more detail. All right, the last step that I'm going to do, and you could do these steps in any order once you have your data graphed, is I'm going to go under the menu in the editing for series. Um, the reason I'm going to do this is I want it to put in a trend line for me. If you were graphing by hand at this point, you would take a ruler and line it up with your data points so that you have an equal number above and below your ruler, and you would literally draw a line to where it intersects with the x-axis. Google Sheets can do some of that work for you, so I want to show you how to do that. Under Series, if you scroll down, you have the option to include a trend line, so you're going to click on that. We're expecting a linear relationship here. Um, so you want to make sure it's selecting linear. And then I encourage you to include the R squared. Um, the closer the R squared value is to one, the stronger the relationship. Um, so it will put a label for you right in there. And notice our R squared value with this data set is 0.979, which is great. The other thing it will do is extend or extrapolate the trend line for you and show you where it intersects on that x-axis. And look, we're very, very close here between about negative 260 degrees Celsius and negative 300 degrees Celsius. Remember, we're expecting absolute zero to be at negative 273 degrees Celsius. So this is really excellent data. From there, you can save your graph, you can copy your graph, and you can paste it directly into your lab report. You're going to do the same thing for your second sample of gaps, um, and you're going to extrapolate and figure out where that intersection point is. So that's how to do that graphing assignment in Google Sheets. If you'd like to see it in Excel, I'm going to do it as a separate video.